Welcome back to another edition of the Raiderland Roundtable. We're hanging out with our friends today at the fabulous Gators. We got here a little bit early before they kind of opened up. They were kind and they do have frog legs here. So keep that in mind this week as Tech gets ready to take on TCU. Let's begin, boys, talking about defense. Apparently, we at Texas Tech do not understand it. It is foreign after last week. Is it time to fully embrace the idea of just not even kicking off? Onside kick every time. Is that a better way to get stops or at least get the ball back? What do you think? Well, you still got to play special teams if you do that. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So that's forgotten. a slight problem. But, no, I, hey, why not at this point? You certainly can't make things go more wrong than right. they already have. So try it a few times. You're bound to get one or two a game. Get the ball right back. It's about the average rate of stops yeah, right now for half. Honestly, thinking about it, if you had just done that last game, you'd probably give yourself a chance to recover one of those, and then you get that touchdown ahead that you needed to equalize it or get ahead by one. You blew it right before the first half ended, and that yeah. was your chance to really kind of keep it even or stay ahead by one point going into the break and get the ball back. That would have been Tech's moment to take the lead for good for the game. They could not have had to stop Oklahoma the rest of the night and could have had that touchdown lead as long as they kept scoring and they blew it. So, hey, why not at All this right. point? All right, Clint, you are a warrior poet, in fact. Do you embrace the onside kick, or do you kick deep and take your chances with the defense? I, I don't care. I uh, really don't. <laughs> Either way, I just I don't know. I think that uh, Travis's point was probably one of the worst I'm going to hear all day right now. I just think we underutilized the drop kick, and I think if Ooh. we could bring that Now bring back. back the drop kick, and we do have something. I think so. So yes. That's, that's Wes Walker can do the drop kick. And I just want to point out, I'm holding the microphone. Are you holding the microphone? I am holding the microphone. Cut. We'll start all over. <laughs> edit that out. Let's go on to the left side. You're right as you look on today. Am I, am I crazy if you're saying try it one game, see what happens? Oh, not only are you not crazy, you're a genius. Well, it works twofold, true. okay? If, you, if you, you're going to try it at least seven times in a game, right? Yeah. You're going to score seven touchdowns. You're going to get one of those you would think one of those. So there's an eighth touchdown right there. And not only that, your defensive stats are helped out tremendously because <laughs> they only have to go half the field as opposed That's to uh, 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 three, th three quarters of the field. I mean, you're helping out You can out move up in total yardage defense. Hey. I'm looking out for you, David. I think yeah, you're, you're David Gibbs' yeah. agent right now. Well, if you do it, you got to go all in. Right. Uh, we're talking no punts on fourth down. I'm fine with that. Side kicks, go for two, uh, two point conversions after touchdowns. You're going to have to do everything possible to to score points and and hope that you keep the ball away from the other team uh, there's a high school that does that pulaski uh, academy in arkansas yeah stefan yeah. lux alma mater for those of you that remember bad former red raider quarterbacks i don't know that he was bad well either. he just never got to play he okay. was he i believe the term was he never filled out like we thought he would <laughs> uh, let's go talk about the tc horn frogs gary patterson bringing the gnome back is he overrated, underrated as a coach, overrated, underrated as a garden gnome? Uh, I, th I think he's obviously not overrated as a coach. He's made it to a Rose Bowl before. Um, he's, uh, he's probably one of the best fathers out there because he knows how to tie those kids' shoes yes. nice and tight and only tie them one time. That's right. Right? What, That's all I got. I don't have the gnome. I, garden gnome, he needs a beard and he needs a pointy hat. He has neither. So uh, points off for the garden gnome. Joe, uh, Joe Biden said he wanted to fight Donald Trump. Who would you like to see? Gary Patterson fight. Sonny Cumbie. Sonny Cumbie and Patterson fight during the game. I'm yeah. watching it. I'm watching for that this week. <laughs> Gnome talk with Travis Cram here in Raiderland. It's time uh, to we, we, uh, He's got the beard. He has your belt doing. Wait, <laughs> Just need how, a point he had. How do, how do we rate Gary Patterson now? We've seen him come through the Big 12. They, they've not regressed the way many people thought. He's a goofy guy. But I, I'm getting to think maybe we underrate what he's doing. I thought they'd fall off. I really did. I, I think everyone thought they would. I, even when they moved over to the conference after winning a Rose Bowl, everyone thought they would eventually fall off. But if this is any argument to what we thought might happen if, say, an SMU comes in the Big 12 or a Houston comes in the Big 12, the recruiting picked up. And I don't know if they necessarily got better than they were, but they stayed where they were. Yeah. They're still winning 10, 11 games a year. They've got a share of a conference title, which you can't say at Texas Tech no. right now. So. Gary Patterson as a coach, he's one of the longest tenured head coaches next to, I think, Kirk Ferenz at Iowa and Stoops at Oklahoma. They're the three longest tenured coaches in college football in Division I. So, uh, yeah, and as far as his game, he might have the best mock turtleneck game <laughs> next to Phil Mickelson. <laughs> I think those two should have a sh some kind of a showdown. And they both kind of have the man rack thing they going. Do. They do. That would be a good fight. There's that would be a fantastic. There's a lot of moving parts in that. Yeah. Phil would cheat, though. 
Probably. I would take Phil in a nine iron. You gotta Maybe watch out for that left hook. And he's got a good gap yeah, wedge. That's right. Phil would gamble, take the dive, and collect uh, on the back end. Right? Yeah. That's right. All right, Clint, <laughs> you own. You, okay. you don't touch the microphone. We had to edit out the. You own numerous garden gnomes. I do. Can you honestly say that you've purchased every single one of those, or have you stolen some? They're all stolen. They're all stolen. I, I don't have a garden, so they just kind of hang around the house. But, uh, <laughs> they're important to me. One of them leaves. They're the only thing Saturday. I got. Yeah, in exactly. All my though, yeah. That's it. But all my divorces. That's all I got. Garden gnomes. <laughs> Pat Mahomes has solidified himself, I think, legend-wise here at Texas Tech. Now fighting through this injury, doing what he did against uh, Oklahoma last week. Are we numb to the numbers? Have we reached a point where now it's, it's almost happening so much that it's hard to put it into perspective? And even the rest of the country, I thought this week, almost looked at it more as an oddity than an accomplishment. Yeah, I am. I, I don't know if the rest of the country is. I am completely numb to it. I think we've been around it for the last 16 years. Yeah. Hyping up this offense and the greatest show on college turf and throwing up 1,000 yards. You know, there was a good – stat around that when, when you showed the four guys that held the FBS records for right. the most total offense. In a game. In a game. Three of the three of the four lost that game. Yeah. Two of them played against each other. Yeah. Washington State and Cal. But I mean, you want to know what that holds you at? You're three and four right now. You I'm gotta not. think tech is. well tech is, thank yeah. you. Yes. I'm about three. five nine, five you're ten about, okay. on a good day. On a good day, depending on what store you're walking That's out exactly of. what's gonna be uh, the score. Three and four, you're in danger of possibly becoming the first team to lead the country in total offense and not be bowl eligible in 24 years. Houston in 1992 was the last team to do that. Every other team since has at least won enough games to be bowl eligible that led the team, led the country in total offense. That's kind of staggering when you think about it. It is. And you really are on the precipice of this. And your defense is second to last in the country right now. That's not good. Ahead of only Oregon, which that's kind of shocking since they're known for offense yeah. as well. I, I, I use the phrase numb to numbers now. And it, it, it's unfair because what Mahomes did was amazing. But again, even the rest of the country was kind of like, well, it happened in the Big 12, and that's what they do. Did you say gnome to numbers? No, or no, no, no. Oh, okay. Difference. Num, I, num, num, I think, num, I, to num. be honest with you, I think a lot of people are just nationally because the guy on the other end of the – or the other sideline won the Davey O'Brien Player of the Week award, and yeah. he had seven touchdowns, but he didn't have near the numbers as the guy that set all these records, yet nobody's paying attention to him. It, 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 it kind of stinks for Texas Tech that it's come to that point, and I'm wondering why it's just Texas Tech that gets that. Uh, yeah. Boise State had their system, and they were able to get a guy to New York for the Heisman Trophy ceremony. Right now, Washington, which is the same exact system, has a guy in the Heisman Trophy. Uh, he's a Heisman Trophy hopeful. Hopeful candidate. He's a candidate, and it's the same thing, but at a different school. It's almost everybody's like, well, that's what t Texas Tech's supposed to do. And it's, a, it's not okay for Texas Tech, but it is for everybody else, apparently. So I'll, add that, I'll add that to you, Scott. Does yeah. having more guys have success in this offense over the last 15 years since Leach started it hurt you more than having a quarterback do what Mahomes is doing? I think it does for a, for a couple of reasons. Number one, look at your record. I mean, you're, you're, you haven't made a, BS, B, uh, excuse me, BCS bowl. It's a BCS Bowl. You yeah. haven't. Um, you're right. You, you've won one share of one conference championship. <laughs> And, and so then it's, it goes back to would you trade 200 yards passing a game for, for a couple of wins? I think everybody in this town would. And that's, that's, the, that's the balance of it. And look at Washington right now, top five in the country. Look at Boise State. They've played in more BCS games than, than Texas Tech has. And so I think you, when you combine all that, you, I mean, you're known for one thing, and you do, you do it very, very well. And, but, but it's got to be a little bit more balanced. I think what's going to have to happen is somebody's going to have to uh, – Pat Mahomes' biggest problem is that there was no Pat Mahomes before him because I think Mahomes will go to the NFL and play for money for several years. I think he has that talent. If somebody out of this offense had done that before Mahomes got here, I think they would look at him completely differently. But well, without having that quarterback in the league, no one else has gone on to do anything. Tech now exists in this bubble. They exist in the statistical bubble world that everybody just shows them into, and they say it's not real. And that's 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 your, the, the other part of your problem is that you've got uh, you, the, there's some Boise State guys that have that have made dents in the NFL. Yeah. Your most successful quarterback in the NFL is Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah. You want to know what Cliff Kingsbury's career NFL stats are? <laughs> <laughs> I know this, and it's sad. He's one for two for 17 yards. With the Jets, right? Uh, yes, yeah. with the Jets. Finished a game in Denver. Uh, you don't want to know who the pass was completed to? 
Lavernius Coles. Oh, I got fantasy points Good for that. <laughs> hey, we want to thank everybody out here at Gators for letting us hang out today on the weekly roundtable. Uh, we'll give you a heads up the next time we're going to be out here. If you guys kind of want to hang out with us, maybe uh, have a little lunch with us, we'll have you out. In the comment section below, drop us a line. Any questions you want a uh, to ask us, we can answer on the uh, down thread there here on our uh, Roundtable Weekly segment. Appreciate you guys hanging out in Raiderland. Be good.